Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to be solving quadratic equations through completing the square. So we will look at these three equations and solve them following the same basic steps, but just to show you that you can solve when you have um, no coefficient of x squared, when you have a negative x squared, or if you have a coefficient like 3x, uh, 3 in front of x squared. So we're going to solve each of those and show you the, the steps. You'll notice that the steps are very similar each time. Let's start off with our first one. x squared plus 8x plus 12. When you're solving using completing the square, what you want to do is get all the x's to the left of the equation and all the numbers on the right. To do that, we'll have to subtract 12 from both sides of this equation, leaving us with x squared plus 8x is equal to negative 12. Now, what you're looking for with completing the square is that we are going to make a perfect square quadratic equation on the left side of the equal sign. To do that, we need to add a number here, um, right on the left side. To determine the number that you are going to add, these are the steps that you'll follow. You take the middle the number from the that term 8x, so you're going to take the number 8, and you're going to divide that by 2 and square it. So it'll look like this. 8 divided by 2 is 4, 4 squared is 16. The number 16 is going to be added here, and to keep the equation balanced, you're going to add it here as well. So it'll look something like this x squared plus 8x plus 16 is equal to negative 12 plus 16. The whole reason that we do this completing the square thing is so that we can get to this point where we have a perfect square quadratic equation on the left side of the equal sign. So that's what you have here, x squared plus 8x plus 16. It's a perfect square quadratic. If you've solved perfect square quadratics already, this is the the answer here. If you've never done this before, what you're basically doing is factoring this trinomial so that you have x here and half of this number right here. This 4 is the number that will multiply times itself to give you the final number and add together to give you this middle number. So it's just like factoring a quadratic equation or a trinomial this is what it looks like. All right, and that's the entire point of doing completing the square. You're trying to figure out what number to add right here so that you can have a perfect square at the end. So let's get rid of all that stuff on that side and show you how to finish this off. You'll take the square root of both sides of this equation, leaving you with x plus 4 on the left, and the square root of 4, which gives you plus or minus 2. Biggest area of uh, making mistakes is that we forget the square root of 4 is plus or minus 2. So now what I need to do is write two equations. One of the equations will have a positive 2 and the other one will have a negative 2. And then I solve these equations for my value of x. So I'll subtract 4 from both sides to give me x equals negative 2. Subtract 4 from both sides to give me x equals negative 6. And that's the solution to the equation. Could you have also solved this equation using factoring from the very beginning? Sure you could. But there's some genius named Mr. Math somewhere who decided they would make a complicated way of solving a, a quadratic equation. And thus we have completing the square. All right. Let's look at our second sample here of completing the square. With this one, we do have a negative x squared. So we're going to have to deal with that in a little bit. But before we do that, let's go ahead and simplify as much as we can. We'll get all of our numbers onto the left of the equal sign by subtracting 4 from both sides. Now we're going to deal with our negative, uh, negative x squared. To take care of that negative x squared, what we want to do is multiply both sides of this equation times negative 1. That means every single term is going to change their signs. So all the negatives become positive. In this case, that's all we had. Where all negatives just became all positives. So now instead I have x squared plus 2x is equal to 3. 
From this point, I am again going to find what is that number I need to add to the left side so that I can make my entire left side a perfect square quadratic. To do that, I take my coefficient of the second term divided by 2 and then raised to the power of 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared equals 1. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides of this equation to keep it nice and balanced. So there's my equation. Um, that's it. Now I have my perfect square quadratic. I have x squared plus 2x plus 1 on the left side of the equation. It's a perfect square, which means I can simplify it down to looking like this x plus 1 squared. This number x um, inside of the parentheses, it can be multiplied times itself to get 1 or added to itself 1 plus 1 to get my um, second term in the trinomial. Now I'm going to give myself a little bit of space over there. I'll take the square root of both sides of this equation and solve it just like I did my last one, I will have x plus 1 equals positive 2, x plus 1 equals negative 2. All right, and I'm writing them out before solving them just so that we emphasize that you need to look at this plus or minus 2 and make sure that that's in there. I'll subtract 1 from both sides of the equation for my final answer that x is equal to 1 and x is equal to negative 3. In my third sample, I have a coefficient of x, or a number in front of, or sorry, coefficient of x squared, a number in front of x squared. So in this example, I'm going to follow all the same steps that I did, only I have to deal with that one as well. So let's start off here. Um, I'm going to get that negative 5 over to the right side of the equal sign, which gives me 3x squared plus 12x is equal to 12. Now, to get rid of the 3 in front of the x squared, I'm going to divide all three terms by 3. So I'm dividing everything by 3. 3x three squared divided by 3, 12x divided by 3, and the 12 divided by 3, which leaves me with x squared plus 4x is equal to 4. I'm in now in a very similar situation where I need to find the number that's going to be added both on the left side of the equal sign and also to the right side of the equal sign to keep things balanced. To find that number, I take 4, which is the number right here in front of the x. It gets divided by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared gives me 4. <laughs> so I'm going to add 4 both there and there, giving me an equation that has a whole lot of 4s in it. All right x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 4 plus 4. So I'm going to simplify that down a little bit in my next step. You know what? I'm going to clear this left side here just to give me a little bit of space and then simplify that down. So 4 plus 4 is 8. That will be on the right side of the equation. And then this x squared plus 4x plus 4 is a perfect square quadratic that can be simplified down to x plus 2 squared, as you see there. Take the square root of both sides. And in this case, um, this equation is a little bit more challenging because you end up with a situation where the 8 cannot be simplified in a nice way. The square root of 8 simply is written as plus or minus the square root of 8. I will still set up two equations one with a positive square root of 8, one with a negative square root of 8. And I will still solve by subtracting 2 from both sides of the equation. But my answer is that I end up with something a little funky. Negative 2 plus the square root of 8. Negative 2 minus the square root of 8. It's not very pretty, but that is the most concise way to write my final answer. You can make it into a decimal um, if you'd like to but you'll just leave your answers. If you get fraction answers or answers with square roots in them, just leave them as is, and that's the, the best, most accurate way of writing those. So these are the three equations that we looked at. I hope that that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.